Hey everybody, good morning. I'm uh, working today on Rusty, who is a Cornelli A chain stitcher. And sorry, I have my um, arm here attached to the table. I'm going to hook you up in the arm in a second, but I just wanted to point out that the, um, the Cornelli has springs that are external. There's three on this Cornelli. The earlier versions had only two springs, and it replaces the spring on the Singer that is in inside the tube. So um, I'm just gonna do a little bit of sewing on um, Rusty here. This is Rusty, the um, the Cornelli A uh, chain stitcher that I found and resurrected from a boat anchor. So I'm gonna clip you into my um, holder arm here and I'm gonna start to do a little sewing. So um, when you're sewing, you can peek up here at your, the some people say the nose of the machine, that's this part here and that um, indicates what direction you are going. So I sometimes look up there to see where I'm going. So I'm working on my, um, sorry, I'm working on this, this pattern here, this travel trailer at the beach pattern. And um, so I'm working on the waves now. I had to um, kind of invent a little bit of the blue because my picture didn't come far enough down. So I'm just gonna wing it. So what I've done is, um, I'm working on the outline and I've outlined the tan sand color and I've got five colors of blue and a little bit of white I'm going to put in here. But so I don't have to take the project in and out. I've outlined the blue and I'm going to fill it now and then outline the others and peel away the paper kind of as I go. So um, right now I'm going around, sorry for the wiggling on the arm, I'm going around the second um, pass of the blue and um gonna start filling probably from the other from the up I usually do best filling from left to right so um Rusty's working fine I can see you fell down a little bit here let me raise you up a little bit um oops sorry about the wiggling it's the arm I know you guys are getting seasick um so I'm just working my way down around the outline and this is a gift for a friend but I'm not so concerned about where I'm going because the next color that comes will go slightly over top the edge of this one and um, it will fill uh, better a more clear edge Rusty's a little uh, cranky on the thicker seams. I had to um, put a Mauser foot on Rusty because I had this other spiked um, claw foot that was smaller and the spikes are pretty much like worn out. So I'm actually using a Mauser claw foot on this right now. So I'm going over my uh, outline a second time. And uh, in case you're wondering, underneath the denim jacket, I have two layers of um, tearaway backing. And um, I can tell you that uh, the Cornelli has uh, nine inches of um, harp space, nine inches of horizontal harp space, and the Singer has ten. And so I'm kind of rolling the, the jacket up at the ends so I can pass it back and forth. And um, I do miss that extra one inch that the Singer has or the Mauser has. But I wanted to give Rusty a little bit of exercise and love. So now I'm at the top and I'm just going to start filling with circles. Um, blue on blue, it doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to get really good coverage anyway. Let me see here. I have my three-quarter horsepower servo motor with 45 millimeter pulley set at speed of 1500. Not quite max at the moment. So um, 
like I can see I missed some denim space here. Usually I do my circles and then all the stitches are in a line. So if the fabric bends, it like opens up a gap between the stitches. So I usually circle around and do my fill. And then I come back and I do um, random circles like across the direction that I've filled so that I can uh, kind of nail it all down. Um, so I'll just keep going here. Oh, I'm using uh, Madeira number 12 uh, rayon, classic rayon. And like I can see, I missed a spot here, so I'm just going to go back. So I'm using the um, the little trick that Holly Dye told us to cut a notch in your thread and um, feed your thread into your um, tube and through the notch, which I have the notch on the back and back up, and it, it actually looks like it's working perfectly. Um, there's no kinks in my thread, and that's amazing. Thank you, Holly, for showing us that. Anyway. So, okay, back to the sewing. So I'm going to um, fill this hole. This, sorry, you can't see. This right here is, is a sort of thin. So I'm going to do my circles full width. This, I'm going to lose this piece of paper. I'm, I'm trying to save that because it has... Well, I don't, I suppose I don't need it. It doesn't have much on it. I'll come back and wing this with two other colors of blue. So I should say I have my, my, sorry, I hit you. I have my tension kind of loose because, um, this is going to go in the washer and dryer and uh, it, it will shrink up a little bit. And once it goes through the washer and dryer, I find that your stuff smooths out. And I just prefer that, that look. I mean, it's got to be durable. So now I'm going to have to unroll this side of my jacket. If I can get further over here. And I have a lot of missed spots, but I don't know. I don't really care. It's uh, even unevenness. So I don't know if you can see here, but... um. The circles are all going up in a row, and if you bend the fabric, you can see through it. So that's where I'm saying I come back and I kind of go in an opposite direction later to kind of just nail down um, the thread. I have to unroll the jacket a little bit. So um, it doesn't like to climb up on the seam here. The, the Singer and the Mauser do this much better. So you just have to kind of make sure that it gets up on the seam, the, the foot, and uh, then it will, will work. So I'm giving it a little push. I'm going to do that corner better. Come back over here. I can see that that's going to be an issue with the Cornelli climbing up on at least this seam. This seam is a little thicker than, than this seam. So um, it's not as, as easy going as the, the Singer and the Mauser. I should say that if you have a Cornelli, 
they usually did not come with the worm gear with the cap where you can switch easily between moss and um and i'm still kind of pushing the fabric while i'm working near the seam anyway the um the cornelli does not come with the spring cap for the worm gear usually so i'm actually using a mauser um worm gear abdul with a mauser international who sells them they're like five dollars for a replacement worm gear with cap. Okay, so now I don't have to hold it at all. I want to go back the other direction. And I know I'm missing a lot of um, fabric, but I, I don't really care. I guess I'm just going to take this paper off. <laughs> okay. So now I've pretty much got my fill um, up and down, and I'm going to go back and get some of the areas I might have missed and try to go where these um, stitches here are all going up. I'm actually going to come across them and sort of nail them down. I know that uh, other people are real particular about how their stitches are lined up, but I really don't care. I'm just trying to cover the fabric, and I think it actually adds a little bit of visual depth to it. So I'm kind of going right through the middle. I think the main thing is that you circle and that um, locks down the stitches. Also, by going over it a second time, if I miss something, I can kind of hit it a little extra hard. I can see that um, this is good. It's not really puckering up very much. And so there might be some loose lo loops, loose loops, but um, when you wash it, that'll even out. And I found it's better to have it um, not puckered and then let it shrink a little through the wash. I'm actually loosening my tension just a little here. Um, Better to have it pucker up in the wash and then it's flat and then you don't have to iron it. I don't like giving jackets to people that they're going to have to iron because most likely they'll use a hot iron and they won't mess up the embroidery. So I'm almost to the end of my um, second pass of fill with the, the nail down of all the lines that I like to do and now I'm at the, the scene so I'm just going to be a little careful. Okay. And I can wing back over. I'm seeing a couple spots I missed but it doesn't really matter. This machine I think is a little more noisy than the Mauser or the Singer. I don't know why. Um. Okay. So that's uh that's filling. Um, 
hopefully you can see it. Um, I know like I missed a few spots, but I, I honestly, I really don't care. Um, I'm a little concerned about doing this whole sand area. That's going to take a lot of um, thread to fill the whole area, especially because it's a dark denim and a light color. So that's more um, difficult. But honestly, if some of the blue shows through there, I don't care. Probably on the travel trailer, I'll do that a little more robust so it stands out. But um, basically that's that color. And then I have um, dark, it's not as dark, medium, lighter, and lighter. So I've got five colors of blue that I'm going to do in here. And I am going to put um, white or maybe a silver in, in there. Um, I have a very light gray that looks like white. So, um, that's, uh, Rusty, the Cornelli A chain stitcher up in action. And, um, sorry, it's such a long video, but, um, I figure you just want to maybe see how it works. And, um, Rusty's sitting, you know, here in this table that I built right next to Abdul's Mauser machine there, which um, I have to say is super nice too. But I want to give Rusty a little exercise um, since he's been sitting for quite a while and hasn't really been, been used since I got the Singers and the Mauser. So um, there's Rusty, the, the Cornelli, Cornelli A model, chain stitch and moss stitch. Thanks so much for watching.